In this video, we're gonna cover how to back up original Xbox games to use in emulation. With XMU, Zemu, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, continuing to progress and more games becoming playable, it is becoming quite a replacement option to original Xbox systems. And for any of you out there who happen to have a large physical collection of original Xbox games, you might be interested in backing them up to try out on the emulator and experience features like up as well as Insignia Xbox Live Play. So in this video, we're gonna cover a number of different methods of backing up your original Xbox games using an original Xbox. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, you are going to need to have access to a modded original Xbox system. It doesn't matter which version. It doesn't matter if it's a soft mod or hard mod. You just need access to a modded Xbox hooked up to your home network. So if you need to mod your Xbox, I do have a soft mod tutorial on the channel that will be linked in the description below. After your Xbox is modded, just get it boot up into your preferred dashboard. Doesn't matter which dashboard, as long as it has network and FTP capabilities enabled. So just go ahead and make note of your Xbox's IP address and make sure it is connected. And now from here, go ahead and insert any Xbox game that you wish to back up into your Xbox's DVD drive. So I'm using Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood as my example. Now to back up our game using only the DVD drive in an FTP program. So here we go. I am using FileZilla for this example. So I'm just gonna FTP into my original Xbox. And then for the username and password, they're typically defaulted to Xbox and Xbox, and port 21 is what you want to connect with. And once you have FTP'd in, you will have access to your Xbox's file system right here. So to access our DVD that we wish to back up, you're just going to double click on the D drive, and then you can create a new folder on your desktop or something. So we're just going to name this one Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood for the time being. Then just select all the files on the disk inside the D drive here. So here they all are. And then copy them into your new folder. And then just wait for it while it does its thing. This can take anywhere between five to 20 minutes, depending on the size of the disk. And once the transfer is completed, you can repeat the process for as many games as you wish to back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Star Wars Battlefront 1 right now as well. But once you have the new disk in place in the FTP browser here, you just click on, right click on it, refresh, and then your new disk's data will populate the menu. So I'm just gonna make a new folder here for Star Wars Battlefront. There we go. Refresh my directory listings here. And then copy them all into the new folder. And then just wait while it does its thing. All right, now with both those transfers completed, just gonna close out of this for a second. All right, now that we have our games backed up in extracted format here, we need to convert them back into XISOs to make them usable on XMU. So the easiest way to do this is to use extract-XISO. And if you don't already happen to have this, you can find the download link in the description below. Just grab the latest version and download the extract-XISO win32release.zip file right here. Then get it extracted and you'll have the extract xiso.exe. Now what I like to do is just make a new folder. It doesn't even need to be named anything and then just put your games and extract xiso inside of it. Now on extract xiso, right click on it, go to properties and copy the location. Now open up a command prompt window. So you can find this in search bar command prompt. And with it open, type in cd and paste in the location you just copied. There we go. Now we're going to type in extract dash XISO space dash C and then the name of one of our folders. So let's go ahead and start with Star Wars Battle Front because it's smaller. And with that entered in, I'm just gonna press enter and it will convert it into an XISO for me. And there we go. Now I have an XISO for Star Wars Battlefront. And you can see that it's the same size as the original folder that we made it from. Now just repeat the same process with all of the games that you have backed up. So now I'm gonna do it for Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood.
And there we go, now I have an XISO for Brothers in Arms Earned in Blood. And now you can begin loading these games up in XEMU as long as they are compatible. I honestly haven't checked the compatibility list, so I don't know if either one of these are, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I'm just gonna go to load disk, go into my new folder, and let's start with Star Wars Battlefront here. Let's see if that one loads up. And there it is, Star Wars Battlefront, cool. And there we are, Star Wars Battlefront in actual gameplay within XEMU. Very cool stuff. Now let's give Brothers in Arms a try here real quick. So, gonna load that one up. And there we go, Brothers in Arms are in the blood. Very cool. Now that first method is going to be the easiest and most straightforward, but that being said, chances are you have been using DVD to Xbox to back up stuff for a long time now to get it installed on your modded system. So if you're using DVD to Xbox, you can continue doing so, it's fine. There are two disk copying methods available within the program. There is just your normal disk dumper that copies all the files in extracted format. And then there is also an ISO ripper. And that one is more of a full disk backup. So you could use either method to back up your disks, but do note that there are some games where the file system of the Xbox's internal hard drive will not let the files be copied over correctly. That's one of the reasons why that FTP method is so useful. But insert a game you want to back up, choose between your normal backup method and your ISO ripper. Again, it shouldn't matter a whole lot for most games. The normal method is going to be much quicker. The ISO ripper takes around 45 minutes compared to about 15 for a normal disk dump on a bigger game but just select the partition that you're gonna install it in and start the backup process and then wait for it to do its thing. I'm gonna do a normal backup on Brute Force here because I have a ton of ISO backups already that I'm gonna use for my examples. And again, they take forever, so I don't wanna do another one right now. But once the copying has completed, you can see that Brute Force took me about 17 minutes there. You can go ahead and back up more games if desired, or if you're ready to copy them over to your computer, you can just exit to your dashboard. Now back on your dashboard, just make sure that your Xbox is again connected to your home network and is being assigned an IP address. And then just make note of it so we can use that in our FTP program. So now over on the computer, just open up an FTP program such as FileZilla and get connected to your original Xbox. So I'm just gonna type in my Xbox's IP address here. And then again, username and password are typically defaulted to Xbox, Xbox, but if you change them, just insert whatever you need to put in for your needs. And then just get connected to the Xbox. And once you are connected to your Xbox via FTP, just go ahead and open up the partition that you backed up the games into. So I put mine in the F drive here under games. So I backed up brute force using the extracted method here. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this one over to my desktop. And then again, I also use the ISO backup method for most of my game backups. So I'm just gonna grab one of the bigger ones here, such as Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance. This one is massive. So I'm just gonna add that to my queue here to back it up to my computer as well. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and sit here and wait for the file transfer to proceed. All right, now that those transfers are complete, just gonna close out of that. So Brute Force, this is the one I just copied that's in an extracted format. So something that DVD to Xbox does is that it actually alters the default.xbe executable for compatibility for running games from hard drives. Doesn't always affect every file, but you can see that it makes a backup of the original right here. And that's the one that we are going to want to use as we make our XISO image. So if you can't see the file extensions, you can head up into your view tab, show, and make sure that file name extensions is turned on. But anyway, we're gonna delete the processed one here and replace it with the original. So we're just gonna delete the underscore orig file there. And there we go. Now it is norm a normal default.xbe. Next, we're gonna use extract xiso to convert it into an xiso for use on xemu. And again, if you don't already have extract xiso, download link will be in the description below and you grab the win32 release.zip and get it extracted. So now we'll just go ahead and make a new folder here. We'll drag brute force and extract XISO into it just for easier use here. So right click on extract XISO properties and grab the location data right here. Next, open up a command window, command prompt window rather. Type in CD and then paste in that file location. Now type in extract dash XISO space dash C space, 
And now we need to type in our folder that we want to create the XISO from. Now, brute force is actually gonna be problematic for me because of the space here. It doesn't like spaces, so I'm just gonna delete that real quick. There we go. So now I'm just gonna type in brute force and enter. And there we go, it is now creating the XISO for brute force that I can use in Xenu. And there we go, brute force XISO, it's a little over five gigs. And we can confirm that it matches the file size of the folder it came from here. So there we go, perfect. And then I can confirm that this works within XMU by going in and loading up the disk. So we're just gonna select that XISO file and see if it loads up. There we go. Got the loading screen, perfect. And there we have it, brute force up and running within XMU from our DVD backup on the Xbox itself. Now, as for our ISO rips, things are gonna work a little bit differently to get these ones up and running to our desires. So there's a lot of ways to do this, and the one I'm gonna showcase right now is just my preferred method. You can use whatever method you happen to enjoy, but I have modified an ISO merging script that was originally written by Cameron1006 over on the Dolphin forums, and I have that linked in the description below in my Dropbox, so you can just download this file here. And once you have it downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. And you'll see that it's just xiso merge.bat. So drag that into the folder of the game you want to combine the parts of your ISO for. Now we're gonna need to do a little bit of prep on our ISO here. So you can see that there's spaces between part 00 and part 01 here. So we're just gonna get rid of those real quick. So just get rid of those spaces. There we go. Now right click on either of your ISO parts in here and copy in the file location. There we go. Now open up xiso merge.bat, paste in the directory. Now type in the game name you want the merged ISO to have. So we're just gonna go MGS2 for simplicity's sake. And then just press enter and both parts of that xiso should now be merging. And once they've been successfully merged, you can just press any key to quit out of it. And you should be left with a merged ISO file right here. And now that the ISO is merged, we can load it up in XMU and see if it loads up correctly. So we can just grab the merged ISO file here. And we can see that it is now loaded up. All right, and there we go. We are now using our split we are now using our previously split ISO file within XMU without any issue. Now, if you wanted to make this ISO file a little bit smaller, you could load it up into extract XISO. Copy that file directory again so we could get to it easier within command prompt. Open up the command prompt window. CD, paste the directory, there we go. Now extract dash XISO space dash R, and then copy in the file name of your ISO you want to compress or repack into something smaller. So there we go, mgs2.iso. And now when I select it, it's going to go ahead and rebuild that into a smaller ISO size. Now you can see that the difference on Metal Gear Solid 2 here really isn't that much. That's because Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of the larger original Xbox games. But there we go. Managed to save about 100 megabytes on that disc. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move these out here real quick, but anyway. You could go ahead and hold on to the original if you want to, or you could delete it. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. But gonna get that new shrunken ISO loaded up and make sure it's still running as intended. All right, cool, and we're loaded up. So there you have it, a couple of different methods available for backing up your original Xbox games for use in XMU. That first method is definitely gonna be the most preferable as it requires the least amount of steps to get everything up and running within the emulator as possible. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your Xbox emulation projects up and running to your desires. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like, dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content directly to you. 
Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. Seriously, couldn't do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.